Eric Mandel, he is the director of the Middle East Political Information Network. Eric, good to have you back with us. Should Israel be concerned? Yes. Um, I think you pointed out today, today's enemy could be your friend, tomorrow's enemy, today's friend could be your enemy. It wasn't very long ago that Saudi Arabia was a, an existential threat to Israel. We remember back to the AWACS and, and Reagan and APAC lobbying against it. Um, so having armed drones from uh, and being able to build them uh, themselves, getting intercontinent ballistic missiles, um, who knows if the common interest against Iran will last. So Israel should definitely be concerned. How do you think uh, the Trump administration is viewing this, one of its biggest allies in the Middle East, now cozying up to Beijing and buying weapons from China? I think they're not happy. Um, this is a transactional president who had um, concluded a $350 billion deal with Saudi Arabia. But Trump is constrained. He can't transfer uh, missile technology based upon a 1987 American law. Um, but from the Saudi perspective, the way they're looking at mm -hmm. it, America is an unreliable ally from their point of view. Ever since the JCPOA, the Iran Agreement, they felt that America turned against them and their number one ally, America's number one ally, Israel, um, in the post-Khashoggi world. Um, America and Congress has turned against them. Um, one of uh, the senators uh, and the Republican senators had said that uh, Mohammed bin Salman became full gangster of what went on here. Right. Uh, so you're having a situation where um, they're buying things, but the, the Saudis can buy stuff from autocrats um, like China or Russia because they don't have to go through a Congress, and they can buy things where there's a transfer of technology. We in America don't want to do that. Yeah, to your point, uh, Congress, even Republicans, are blocking the president's efforts to sell uh, arms to Saudi Arabia, and you could uh, argue that that's the right move. You could argue that it just drives them into the arms of China. Eric, very quickly, I want to get your thoughts on uh, this recent attack from Syria on Israel's Golan Heights, the Mount Hermon region, uh, an attack that didn't hit any targets today, Thursday, but there was one that did try and hit a target, a, a ski resort in Mount Hermon on the weekend. No casualties, though, thankfully. What is Syria trying to do with these provocations? Well, I don't know if Syria has any real control. Uh, Syria is a weak... Uh, it is, is a weak country after the, the fall, after the civil war. Iran controls it. The Russians now may want to restrain Iran. I'm actually writing an article for the Jerusalem Post just on, just on this topic uh, this week. And what's basically I, I'm looking at here is that can Israel end Iranian full-time permanent control in Syria? Can they get them out, or they're going to continue having to mow the grass in Syria like they've been mowing the grass in Gaza? But this is the existential threat for Israel up there. Right. So each one of these times that gets hit, this is a big deal. Israel's been hitting the T-4 missile base up there. They've been hitting drone bases. Iran is entrenched. Iranian proxies are entrenched. Um, short of a full-scale war, ground troops, Iran is a permanent presence in Syria. And that is certainly uh, the point that Prime Minister Netanyahu tries to drive home every single day. Eric Mandel, thank you very much. Pleasure. Appreciate it as always.